Hi everyone and welcome to my start to stage video series where I have just over a little seven weeks to go before I compete in the Queensland Championships where I'm competing in either bikini or figure championships where I think it's fitness actually we haven't quite decided yet and um, I'm just sharing with you the ups the downs the good the bad and um, how I'm going with creating um, a body that will get me up on stage in my any teeny weeny bikini and stilettos at age 54. <laughs> Oops, <laughs> what am I doing? So there's a reason this is so late and I will share that with you in today's little chat. But before I do share that with you, I just want to tell you what I actually did well this week and give myself a pat on the back. What I've really discovered in the last seven days is I'm coming good. <laughs> and what I mean by that is I, if you asked me what sort of person I am naturally, I would tell you I'm a bit of a buzz box, personality type A, focused, committed, driven, all those different things. When you are that type of personality, um, you can also have those unhealthy traits of feeling stressed, anxious, um, constantly um, go, 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 go. And it can create an imbalance in your life. So what I've been able to congratulate myself and give myself a pat on the back this week is I truly feel like I have given myself permission to slow down and smell the roses as such. And what that has done for me is made me feel in control of my food choices in a far better way. And what I mean by that is when I feel stressed um, and my mind's going, you know, 100 miles an hour and I'm tick, 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 and I've got to be here and I've got to be there and I've got to do this and I've got to do that, I tend to actually get cravings for carbohydrates. So my body is wanting to eat like things like kettle chips, um, rice cakes and I grill cheese on top but we're not talking one or two we're talking eight or ten of them and it's because my body is seriously craving these different foods and I give into it and then I'm just like so many of my clients I have that feeling of remorse I have that feeling of guilt I have that feeling of failure but I also have that feeling of but I feel like it's out of my control. It's like my body has taken over. It's been so interesting for me to observe this week that the slowing down, having a moment to breathe, not putting as much on my plate, giving myself permission to not be perfect, to get as much done as I can, and that's okay. Girls, I actually laid down for, um, I think it was a 30-minute nap the other day in the afternoon. Now, Rob and I have been together for eight years and he will honestly tell you he's never known me once to lay down during the day for a 30 minute nap. I, I can't even tell you the last time I did that, probably when I was quite ill in my thirties. So for me to give myself permission to do that has been amazing. And what it's done, as I say, in regard to food, I haven't had the cravings. I feel like my body is, or my mind, my whole being is in control. It's like I, I'm not looking for food to um, overcome the emotions that I'm feeling because the emotions aren't there because I'm, I'm taking a breath. And so giving myself a big pat on the back for that because at 54 girls, it's only taken me 54 years. <laughs> I'm a slow learner. <laughs> no, I have practiced this. Um, it is a continued practice with me. And I'm sure for those of you that are buzz boxes will totally get me and will go, I'm hearing you, girlfriend. And um, it's hard. It's hard. It's like, I call it like, you know, some people get addicted to alcohol or cigarettes or exercise. 
but it's also like this this thought thing is like an addiction in itself and when you don't allow if the body if it's just it's like it is an addiction so it's like I'm having to practice to release the addiction and pop in I've got lots and lots of different practices so I'm probably raving and dwelling but um, I'll move on from there but that is a huge pat on the back for me so it's allowed me to stay conscious food wise so I really haven't mucked up food wise because I haven't felt the need to it's just it's just not there. So that's really, really been positive for me. Um, I did write down here that what it feels like is when I'm out of control, um, when I say I'm out of control, like I'm anxious and the mind's going, it's like I've got either a child or a teenager inside of me that's rebellious. And it's like that rebellious teenager or child in me wants to eat those foods that I know I'm not meant to, but it's like I'm it's like I've got that teenage brain that's just not capable of being an adult. And by slowing down, I feel like I've come into more of my adult self where I've been able to make good choices. So there you go. <laughs> I'm glad you heard all that. All right, so what did I fail at? Well, this was interesting. I do a weigh-in and a measure every Tuesday morning at 3 a.m. when I get up and naked, and I didn't. There was a couple of reasons. I would have said to you if I was lying to myself that it was cold. That's what I would have said to you. It was cold. And that's why I didn't weigh in a measure. If I was honest with you and myself, the reason I didn't weigh in a measure was I sensed that the scale was not going to give me the results that I was wanting and I didn't want to have to deal with the mindset that comes from that. So that, once again, that mindset of you didn't, do well you you failed you 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 know and girls I realize that that's that perfectionism that type of personality again that isn't healthy and this is one of the reasons I'm doing this journey to observe all these different behaviors that ultimately are sabotaging who I am as a, a 54 year old woman yeah and so I I didn't weigh myself or measure. I felt the guilt of doing that. I also sat in it and understood at a deeper level why I'd done that. But I chose to do it on Wednesday morning, which I did. And I was curious around why I felt the need to not do it, like that fail thing, um, why that was so important to me. And it, yeah, it just really came back to that perfectionist habit of um, if I, you know, I've, I'm, on a, I'm on a mission, I'm, I'm on a project, I'm going to succeed. And I was struggling to know of how that feeling was going to make me feel if it wasn't positive. Anyway, long story short, I got up yesterday morning and I jumped on the scale. The scale told me that I was one kilo heavier than I normally am, but it told me my body fat was 0.1% lower and I'd increased my lean muscle mass by a whole 1%. So this was fascinating for me as well, girls, because I always say to my clients, it's about your body composition. It's not about what you weigh on the scale. The more lean muscle mass you have, the more you're going to weigh. Apple to popcorn. Apple is small and heavy. Popcorn's big and fluffy. This is light on a scale. This is heavy on a scale. This is fantastic. I got a fantastic result. I knew that intelligently. Emotionally, I was like, I've put on a kilo intelligently this is great Dana you've put on a kilo of lean muscle mass emotionally I've put on a kilo 
So this was just fascinating, again, to observe because there was a piece of me that was that uneducated girl that grew up knowing that it's how you look and what you weigh and, you know, girls are meant to be this, that and the other. And that was coming through, that that deep piece in me that's like, You've got to weigh a certain amount. You've got to look a certain way. You've got to have a, like my mother used to rant and rave how her waist was 24 inches. Like, I don't even know what that is in centimeters, but girls, you can understand this is how I grew up. I grew up with a mom that was like, and nothing against my mom, like she grew up as well that way. But it was very much about draw your tummy in, Dana. Don't walk around without um, drawing your tummy in. Stand up tall. You know, don't overeat. Make sure you look good. Like it's, it was all this stuff and it came through and my educated self knew I've done good. My old self struggled. I'm over it. It's a day later and I understand I've done good. So congratulations to me. Woohoo! But I wanted to be honest with that because it's old conditioning that's coming through and it's the, it's the not judging myself for feeling like that, not dwelling on it, not overanalyzing it, but do close up the loop. Understand that's my childhood conditioning. This is who I am today, an educated woman in health and fitness. And this is who I'm choosing to be. So even though this is what came through, this is what won out. And that's the main thing. And I'm over it and I've moved forward. So yippee. (laughs) But girls, be aware of that. Like if you jump on the scale and the scale determines whether your day is going to be happy or whether your day is going to be sad, it is crazy, isn't it? When you think about it, that's because we were brought up from images in magazines, um, television, movies, our parents telling us what is pretty or what is whatever. And if we're not a certain thing on a scale, we fail. Like, crazy because it is all about a body composition if I'm holding more lean muscle mass as a 54 year old woman omg that is fantastic so what I will say is so my measurements were the same I'd lost a centimeter in my waist and I can tell you I've increased my lean muscle mass in my legs and in my back so this was the other piece of the mindset that I struggled with I spoke to my coach I think it was last weekend and she gave me a new program and she said, I think we need to do an actual phone call catch up rather than texting and for, and um, messaging. And she said, I want bikini shots um, just so that we can, I can get a gist of if I need to change your food or whatever. So, okay. Bikini shots, bikini shots. And so I put this off as well. It was just like, I don't want to get in a bikini. And once again, why not? And it was that childhood conditioning because I don't look perfect. (laughs) Can you believe it? Like it's, it's actually probably embarrassing to share it, but it's honest, it's genuine. And it's once again, it's that old conditioning. It's that little young Dana as against my intelligent, educated, older Dana. And so once again, it was like I was able to nip it in the bud. I was able to go, you know why you're not wanting to get into a bikini girlfriend? Because that old you thinks you're not perfect. You're not enough. I am enough, just the way I am. And so I threw on that sequin bikini. I asked Rob to take the photos and I thought, oh, this could be a worry. A sequin bikini in stilettos getting Rob to take the photos. (laughs) So he was just like, what are you doing to me? But anyway, photos were done and um, all done and dusted. And I got them off to Sarah. And you can tell I've increased my lean muscle mass in my legs. I've definitely increased my lean muscle mass in my back. And I've lost body fat. So, I mean, happy 
days to me. So um, it, it's been a very positive week, really, all in all. Um, so what else I've written here is my plan for next week. So I'm getting a new bikini to wear because I don't want to have the same photos in the same bikini because I'm five years older and I want to know which show was which as such. So I've got an appointment on the 5th of August with the girl up here to create a new one. So it's sort of um, exciting in a way. I'll be able to um, pick colours. And I think I said last week I was thinking pinks and blues this time. But anyway... Um, so that's happening. And what else is my goal for the next seven days is to not only continue to go on this train of giving myself time and observing the benefits that come from that, but also being committed to changing the thought patterns, committed to the sabotaging thoughts, committed to the old conditioning, committed to acknowledging it, becoming aware of it, and then creating the changes I need to be able to move on from that without sitting in it at all, without doing nothing about it. I'm all about, um, you know, I can go, oh, yeah, that's from my olden days and do nothing about it. Well, it's just going to keep coming up. So I'm very much a solution solver. And um, I, I think, well, I'm going to solve each of those as they arise and give myself the moment and the time to be aware of what's going on because I'm loving the journey at my age of discovering my emotions and my thoughts and how having the tools, the tricks, the tips, the strategies to be able to get hold of those in a healthy way is literally changing me as a woman for the better. It's making me feel more positive, more self-confident, more better self-esteem, self-worth, and it's all good. I, I really cannot complain in any way, shape or form. Life is good. All right, girls. Well, thanks for sharing in that journey today. It was a bit of a deep and meaningful one, but it was an honest account, which is where I want to go with this. And um, thanks for sharing. Thanks for being my accountability. It's making me step up when I'm sometimes not wanting to. So just another trick, girls, to remember accountability is massive in getting to your goals. If you're the type of girl like me that doesn't like to let other people down and you do enjoy projects, because if you need a goal in regard to your health, your fitness, your wellness, you get an accountability coach and you rock and roll because suddenly you're having to sort of step up. So it's a fantastic way to reach your goals with support, in my opinion. <laughs> All right, guys, see you next week with only six weeks to go. OMG. Okay, have a great week. Take care. Bye.